I'm back, and I've got episode two of Road to Glory season one, which is basically just my grind to get to the Object 263, the new tier 10 Soviet tank destroyer. Right now I am at tier 7, I am a little over halfway through getting the 91,000 free XP needed to unlock the SU-101, and right now I can tell you the SU-100M1 is, for all intents and purposes, a tier 7 tank destroyer with the T-54's uh, high penetration quote-unquote gun even though the penetration still isn't very high for tier 9 but uh... it's definitely definitely more than enough for tier 7 it's basically the T-54's gun but better it's got the same rate of fire same damage, same penetration values but it is both more accurate and aims more than half a second faster at 0.6 seconds uh, faster than the T-54's gun does. So the SU-100M1 is a DPM monster and it's got the gun to go through really anything from anywhere it wants to. So the most heavily armored tank it's gonna see is probably would be E-75's or T-95's or I guess you could say VK 4502Bs, but they're not as strong as E75s really. And they've got the gun to go through it with ease. The only downsides to this tank are the superstructure armor, like the superstructure cheeks, I guess, since it's not a turret. The it's it's fairly weak. It's only about 90 millimeters thick, and it's very flat. The whole the whole armor though the upper glacis does get about 145 millimeters effective armor unangled because it is sloped back, but the superstructure is not. So the superstructure is a fairly weak spot, fairly weak weak spot, fairly big weak spot. There we go. English is hard. Um, yeah, that and the gun arc is very small, so you do find yourself if you're leading a target that's moving a long distance away you're gonna have to turn a lot and that will affect your aim I've missed plenty of shots because I fired just after my tank turned a little bit and so the dispersion went up so the gun arc going from right to left is very small and the gun depression that minus four degrees of gun depression with the rear mounted gun can and will get you in trouble because even a slight like bump in the ground you will like just jerk your gun up and it makes brawling on uneven ground very difficult but you can brawl in this thing with equal tier mediums or lower or like low tier heavies things like that but if it's in a tier 7 game with a lot of tier 7 heavies you don't really want to be brawling because they've got the guns to go through you uh, no matter how well you're angling but uh, so yeah, that first game on the brand new Winter Malinovka, uh, it's it's still effective for TDs. Uh, maybe not this TD as much because like in that game you saw me struggling to get shots on a lot of the enemy tanks because I mean I was on the high ground and it just doesn't have very much gun depression, so I had to kind of get creative and roll back into a little hill or a little bump in the ground so I could get my gun down enough to shoot that T-43 especially because he was just barely in range of my gun and it just hurt a lot but one thing that two, that Wargaming really screwed up with 2.8 is the profitability of the tanks uh, as you can see here with that game I made less than 50,000 credits with the premium account and I netted like less than three grand credits profit with a premium account and doing that amount of damage at tier seven and the only reason I actually got a profit that match is because I didn't didn't use any consumables if you're running full provisions it doesn't matter what tier you're at you have to have a freaking amazing game to even come close to netting anything you have to have a really good game 
you can't shoot any premium ammunition and you can't use any consumables or you're gonna lose money trying to play a game and not lose more than 50,000 credits at tier 9 and 10 is practically impossible if you want to win because you're going to be running full provisions which means uh, food rations the protection kit and the the best oil so you're losing like what is it, like 22,000 something like that credits just from the provisions and then the consumables kind of got nerfed to 15 seconds the adrenaline and the speed boost got nerfed to 15 seconds but they're both more expensive than they used to be in the previous patches so if you use provisions and consumables you're already down like 50,000 credits and that's without using any ammunition at all and the premium ammunition is still hella expensive and a lot of the times you need to use that to win engagements at tier 10 so it's just yeah wargaming screwed up wargaming knows they screwed up there was an international meeting I guess uh, for clan leaders like there were people from the RU server the EU server and the NA server that I saw there I don't know if there's anyone from the Southeast Asia server there or not um, I actually didn't meet didn't make it to the second meeting but I was at the first meeting that was on a Friday and there were people from three different servers there and there was one Wargaming EU representative there and kind of just like listening to us complain at them and him pretty much even though he had nothing to do with it because he's not a dev it's it's really just the, the developers the fact that the game doesn't have a way for at least the majority of people or re really anyone who wants to like super test things like I, I get it it's they've got they're rolling out updates every month like clockwork pretty much and uh, World of Tanks PC does it every like two to four months so they've got time to do the super test but I would I would be okay with having updates every month and a half or two months if for like a week or even a couple of days anyone could get on the test server that only the club war gaming or uh, contributors are able to get to uh, if everyone could get there for even a couple of days we would just we would see just the broken mechanics like the profitability at in patch 2.8 or we would immediately be able to tell if a tank is overwhelmingly overpowered or overwhelmingly underpowered like we would see Kenny Atsu's uh, that freaking a tank that's got over 1900 DPM at tier 3 it, ridiculous we, we would have caught that and we were like oh my god wargaming what are you guys doing give me this tank now and then they'll be like eh we screwed up we're gonna give it the nine second reload like the regular kenny the tier three light tank that's and the, that's available in the tech tree has but the kenny atsu is just completely ridiculous and we would have caught that if we had a chance to super test things and we would have caught things like what was it patch two point no 1.8 maybe or 1.7 with the invisible tank fiasco when a lot of the times both teams wouldn't be able to see each other and so it's just people going and trying to ram other tanks and shoot like the air in front of them and hope they damage other guys like that stuff's crazy we would have caught that if we had the ability to super test but we don't and it, it sucks because I mean wargaming they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place like if if they give us a super testing then they're rolling out patches they have to roll out patches much less often than they do now like they do on PC like it might be four months between patches on PC and it's 30 days for blitz so I don't know what do you guys think would you rather have updates every month or would you rather have the ability to uh, super test updates in a test server um, and have updates every two to four months like there are, there are in PC? Well, anyways, enough of <laughs> me talking about patch 2.8. Let's talk about this game on Middleburg I had in the SU-100M1. This tank is very fast. Literally, the only negatives are 
it has is the gun arc left to right and the gun depression. The gun elevation is awesome, but you, you, you kind of want to not be on <laughs> low ground in just about every situation. But yeah, the, this tank, the superstructure armor is kind of weak. If you get hit in the mantlet, though, it's pretty much an auto bounce. Like right here, this Chiri cannot penetrate me because he's shooting at my hole and my mantlet. And so all three of those shells in his clip bounces. And so that Chiri is not going to do any damage this game because the three shells he fired at me all bounced. And if you see that rate of fire there, I, I beat my platoon mate out in the reload to get the kill on the Chiri. Right now I'm going to the left to see if I can shoot into the cap area or I guess the town area without being spotted. And then there's a surprise M6. So I pull it into him. And yeah, he shoots me in the superstructure. And then I finish him off there. Now I'm turning. Going back to the cap area. My platoon mates kind of having trouble with the KV-3. Either the KV-3 is smart or he just by accident got his back to a wall. To a point where my platoon mate could not circle him anymore. And so my platoon mate has to skedaddle. I, I just said skedaddle. Ugh. Well, he had to GTFO. And so the KV-3 ended up putting one into me. And I finished him off. Or uh, my platoon mate finished him off. Because he came back <laughs> as soon as he stopped looking at him. And I am going to go for this Yag Panther over here. And this KV-2 decides to block my shot. So I kind of had to shoot to the little left more than I wanted to. And I bounced off his front. But oh well. Yag Panther didn't damage me and I damaged him so all's good in the hood that KV bounces off of me and he just he's got like no chance I maybe could have put that second shot into him but I didn't want to like just waste it and go into the wall because you, you just it's so hard to make a good profit like unless you're you know, unless you've got a premium account and a premium tank you just you're just not gonna make money it, it won't happen it really just won't happen so a lot of people thought that this was like Wargaming's like money grabbing thing, like making it a pay to pay to win game or a pay to play game because you can't really pay if you can't make or can't uh, can't really play if you don't make credits. There we go. It, I just realized I was gonna stop talking about patch 2.8. I'm sorry. It's just it irks me because. I, I can't make money unless I'm playing my premium tanks. And I don't want to play my premium tanks because I want to get to the Object 263. <sighs> the struggle is real, right? Anyways, this is M16's World of Tanks Blitz replays. I hope you enjoyed my video, and as always, have a nice day.